Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Happy Sunday. It's Sunday school time. And let's just take a word of prayer. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for bringing us safely to church. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us another opportunity to hear your word. Lord, we ask as we're about to hear your word that you would help us to understand your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. We ask, O oh God, for understanding and that your light will shine on our path, Lord, in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our topic today is seeking godly counsel. Our topic today is seeking godly counsel, and our memory verse is taken from Proverbs 12, 15. Proverbs 12, 15. It says that the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who eats counsel is wise. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who eats counsel is wise. Amen. So life is about making continuous series of decisions. Usually when we wake up daily, we make decisions. We get off the bed, we eat, we go to work, or some of us work remotely. Just whatever it is that we do every day, we make tons of decisions. And according to various internet sources, um, it says that an adult makes about 35,000 decisions in a day and about 2,000 decisions in an hour. When I read that article, I was like, <laughs> 2,000 decisions, like that's a lot, and it sounds quite counterintuitive. But at the end of the day, when you think about it, like to the little details, both conscious and unconscious decisions, we really make a lot of decisions. I don't know if it's up to 2,000 decisions a day, because I, mean, I didn't make the research, but I know that we make a lot of decisions daily. And one good thing about this is that God already knew that we we're going to be making decisions. He already knew that our life was going to be about making choices, making decisions, making decisions daily. And he said in his word that we should trust in the Lord with all our heart. We should lean not on our own understanding. In all our ways, we should acknowledge him and he will direct our path. He also said in his word that I will instruct and teach you in the way that you should go and I will guide you with my eye. Amen. In today's lesson, we'll focus on the scriptural examples and pattern for seeking, seeking, judging and following advice and counsel. No human being is an island, and this is a common parlance that rings true and is also buttressed by the Bible. God, in his mercy, has placed matured, loving, and willing counselors in our lives. This may be our parents, our pastors, friends, siblings, and experts who have vital experience and knowledge that can better our lives in specific areas. We should have the humility, openness, and discretion to develop these relationships and to honor them appropriately. Amen. So what are some of the biblical examples of wise counsel? The first example of wise counsel that we have here is Moses. As close as Moses was to God, he needed Jethro, his father-in-law, to give him sound advice regarding his leadership style. That's according to Exodus 18, 13 to 24. So I'm just going to give um, a brief story of what happened then. So um, God had used Moses powerfully in the Old Testament. He had, God had used him to part the Red Sea. God had used him to bring, uh, bring forth water from the rock. And he was doing powerfully well. And because of all of these things, he, become a person, he, became, excuse me, he became a person of influence. And he, was, he became the judge over the Israelites. So they would come to him and they would bring issues to him, both trivial issues and non-trivial issues. And then eventually... Um, um, his father-in-law, Jethro, w wanted to go and see him. At actually had to go see him with his wife and his two children. And then when they got there, they exchanged pleasantries. And then the next day, they saw Moses began to judge the people. People would stand in front of Moses from morning to evening trying to seek counsel. And I just wanted to imagine it like in this generation. Imagine that you need maybe advice or you need like a direction kind of, and then you have to probably go see someone. And then you have to stand, not even sit. You have to stand from morning to evening. So this was what the children of Israelites did then. And then his father-in-law saw this. His father-in-law, Jethro, he saw this. And then he was like, man, what are you doing? You're going to wear yourself out doing this. And his father-in-law advised him. And he told him that this is what you should do, that you should appoint men of integrity, men of honor, that are men that do they are not corrupt, that hate corruption, and he should ap uh, and he should group the people into hundreds, fifties, and then tens, and then he should uh, uh, he should um, assign these people to be leaders over them, and then the non-trivial issues can be brought to Moses. And the Bible said that Moses heeded to this advice, and it helped him in his leadership style. He became a better leader. So as a leader, our leadership style may not be the best. In fact, hearing from God regularly does not exclude us from listening to the right counsel. And one of the lessons that we learned from 
this story is that Moses did not even ask Jethro for his contribution. He didn't even ask him, but Jethro just thought in his heart that this is what you can do better. Amen. Also, sometimes the decisions we make are not beneficial to us alone, but to tens and thousands of people. For example, Moses followers in this case, because most times the Bible says that they would stand in front of Moses from morning to evening just to get counsel. And eventually, after Moses made the decisions, they didn't even need to do this again. There was no need to stand for stand in front of him from morning to night they began they had um they had the time to prioritize other issues they had the time to do other things even moses himself now had time to to um um to fellowship with god so as believers it's important that we we eat to the right counsel because it's not just us that would benefit from our decisions sometimes it can be our children sometimes it could be our spouse sometimes our family members sometimes hundreds and thousands of people can even benefit from us if we decide to make the right decisions amen Samuel was hearing from God. Samuel is another example. He heard from God, but he didn't recognize his voice at first, and he didn't know how to respond. He took the counsel of Eli to help him with the situation. Another example is Esther, Apollos, and then also Abigail's advice saved David from committing unnecessary murder. And then the last example we have here is Uzziah, who prospered as a king under the tutelage and counseling of Zechariah. Then, so those are positive examples of sound biblical advice. So what are the negative examples? The first example I have here is Amnon and Tamar. We all know the story of how Amnon was in love with his younger sister, in love in quotes, and he had a, a terrible <laughs> he had a terrible friend, and the friend advised him that he should, uh, he should pretend as if he's sick, and then he should tell his, the king, David, his father, that his younger sister should come and serve him. And then we know what happened. He forcefully laid with his sister, and eventually... It led, it led to like um, a division in the family. Then another example in the scripture of a bad counsel is the story of Rehoboam and Israel. Rehoboam is the son of Solomon. After Solomon had died, after Solomon had died, Rehoboam became king, and then the people came to meet him that please just reduce the burden and the tax that your father has placed on us. So Rehoboam was even wise enough to seek counsel. I mean, he went to two different sets of people. He went to the elderly people that had been counseling his father. Then he also went to um, the, his p the people he grew up with. The people, the elderly people told him, okay, yes, you should reduce the burden so that the people can be more committed to you. And then his fellow, his folks, his, the people he grew up with told him that no, that he should even increase it. He should increase the tax we should make them suffer and the burden and then he yielded to the advice of, of of course of his friends and then we know how the story ended it became like a serious problem in Israel and up to the Bible says that up to today that that was what made the 12 tribes of Israel to depart from one another amen so in keeping these biblical examples we need to align ourselves properly with wise people who can sound who can give us sound advice for this is wisdom it is in itself it's important to strongly consider the insights, counsels, and warnings of people that are closest to us and love us, such as our parents, our, our spouses, and godly friends. In selecting our advisors, we must prayerfully determine who to consult, what advice to accept on any given issues. Also, it is advisable to consult professionals and experts who are best suited to give us counsel in these areas. When we form strategic relationships and partnerships, we must realize that God will often confirm his private leading through these ones. Also, it's important that we get input from multiple stakeholders and perspectives, which will give us holistic understanding, which enhances decision making. Amen. So I just want to ask us a question this morning, and you don't really have to answer me back verbally. You can just answer it in your mind. Also, where do you really go when you need to make decisions? When you know that it is this decision, when you make it, it's probably going to determine the next course of your life. For some people, they have to make decisions on where to relocate to, who to marry. Where do we really go? Do we go to various internet sources? Do we go to popular bloggers on the internet? Do we go to our pastors? Do we go to our family members? Where do we really go when we need to make tough decisions? We already know that opinions are cheap. In fact, opinions are one of the cheapest commodity on earth. And whatever choices you make in the long run will make you. Amen. So I want to ask us a question this morning. How do we detect unwise counsel from wise counsel? Maybe, for example, you need to make a very serious decision in your life, and then you're just like, God, what do I do? Especially maybe it's not really something that you know that um, you cannot even decide by yourself. You need input from people. How do you detect? Maybe someone gave you an advice, or maybe you met like two to three people. How do you know mm -mm, this one, this one, this person is saying, I'm not going to listen, I'm going to follow this person. How do we know, how do we detect godly counsel from ungodly counsel? 
Please, we are going to answer. <laughs> or we don't make decisions in our lives. We just, it's like a spiral. We just go as it is. Like, is that what we do? I'm sure we make, we are very intelligent people in the house and we make decisions. Where do we really go? And how do we detect, the question is, how do we detect godly advice from ungodly advice? Like, how do you know that this advice, mm -mm, I'm not going to go with it. Anybody, please? Okay, thank you very much, Ma. Please give her the mic so that our online audience can connect. Well, when I'm teaching um, godly counsel, I look at um, the person's lifestyle, and if they want to tell me, like, for example, like my sister, um, when we talking, she'll give me the world way. She won't give me the godly way. She'll give me the world way, so I really don't talk to her about <laughs> Sir, I Can you speak out, please? When I'm seeking counsel, um, I talk to my mom versus my sister. My mom, she's a Christian. She's going to give me, show me the godly side of what I should do, but my sister's going to show me the world way. She's going to show me the world standards, and that's not what we're supposed to live by. We're supposed to live the godly way. Thank you so much. That was so profound. Any other person? How do you detect when this, the advice this person is giving you is a godly a advice? Thank you so much, Ma. I think it's um, seeing if it aligns with the word of God. Basically. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ma. Then, Amomi, too. Thank you. If you see the Christian life of the person you, are, you want to follow, is he a good leader? How is his family? How is he going in the church, in the word of God? Can he is, does he behave like Christ? Because a lot of people pretend. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. But you look at the Christian life, the way they are doing. Yes. I think that is better. Thank you so much. So in summary, the lifestyle of the person. Then our daddy did too. I think that would be the last contribution. Thank you so much, sir. Also, I believe that you should, even though you seek people's advice, you should be able to pray about yes. it and make sure that it's, it's in line with God's words, like she has been said. Yes, thank you so much. So everybody has spoken very intelligently. And some of the points I have here in line with what we've said, the first way that we can really detect if this person is giving a sound advice or a godly advice is the word of God. The scripture in Psalm 119 verse 105 says, it says that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I don't know if you've ever thought about that scripture, that what a lamp. Imagine that you always, like, maybe when you want to... Um, take an advice. I just want you to learn from this. Imagine that you have a lamp in your hand, a mini lamp, or let's say like a lantern in Nigeria, from Nigeria, and then you have it in your hand, and then the scripture says that your word is a lamp unto my feet, and then it's a light unto my path. So you have a lamp in your hand like this, and then you're going, and then you're going. And you know that for you, for there to be a path, then there has to be like steps, right? So that means that for the word of God to be a lamp, for the word of God to be a light unto our path, it has to be a lamp unto our feet first. So that means that for God to be able to direct us in the big things, then we have to know how he directs us in the little things, right? For example, maybe people want to get married or they want to relocate. They, they need to make big decisions. I don't know, okay, once I make this decision, it's going, to, it's going to affect the course of my life. And then these people, they begin to, they begin to now, that's when they now start seeking God. But that shouldn't be what we should do as believers because if we already know how God directs us, if you know how God speaks to us, even in the little things, when, when his word is already a lamp unto your feet, then it's easy for the word of God to be a light unto your path. But some of us, we want the word of God to be a light unto our path first. It's not going to work like that. It's, it's, it's a step by step. God is a God of process. And that's one thing also about God. When God gives you a vision or when he gives you something to do, he doesn't reveal everything to you because he wants his word to be a, a guide to your feet. As you are taking the steps one after the other, then eventually the path will now become clearer that even the people that are now coming after you, because of your obedience, they can also tread on the same path and then they, they will not fall. Amen. The second way we can discern the word of God, that, that we can know that is a God, godly counsel, is discernment and the help of the Holy Spirit. The scripture in Isaiah 11 to, Isaiah 11 to reveals the word of God. It reveals who the spirit of God is. It says that the spirit of God, the seven dimensions of the spirit, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel and might. That's one of the, in fact, that's one of the very amazing things, the blowing things about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our counselor. He can counsel us if we'll be humble enough to go on our knees in such a way that even when, when eventually when you have made the decision or even if you haven't made the decision, when you now go to people, what they will tell you will be a confirmation of what you already have, what the Holy Spirit has told you. Because the Holy Spirit will never confuse you. If you have something in your spirit and someone else is coming to tell you this and someone else is coming to tell you, you will be confused and the Spirit of God would never confuse you. Amen. 
The, the third reason why you can know is opinions and projection of their insecurities. If you go to someone for counsel and you look at, and it looks like this person is beginning to project how they feel, this, the person is projecting their feelings on you. It might not even be their fault. Maybe it's just life. Life has dealt with them so much that any opportunity to talk like this, they just tend to spill out. It might not be their fault, but as believers, you should be able to know when this person is talking to you from a person, from a place of the spirit, not from a place of emotions. Amen. When they counsel you to do what you want to hear, not what God, God is telling you for some people maybe because of your relationship with them they don't really tell you okay you should go this way or go that way they will just they will just tell you what they think that that this is what you this is what you want to hear they will not tell you what the word of god says then the next is they want to control you or control what you do for some people this is if you go to them for counsel they, they want to be the one to control your family your spouse your children that's not a godly counsel for some people, they want, to be, they want you to be dependent on them, especially maybe financially or anything. That's, that is not the proper way. And also, the, the last point which our sister mentioned is um, um, if the person is an unbeliever whose lifestyle or their convictions, their values does not align with the word of God. Amen. So what are the qualities of a godly counsel? I mean, this is now you, the seeker. The first quality here is humility. Humility is requ required for learning, and being willing to be teachable allows us to pursue and receive counsel from others. If Moses, for example, Moses, Mo if Moses was not meek, Jethro's advice would have fallen on deaf ears. The next is discernment, which I already mentioned. Then the third is flexibility. We cannot afford to be rigid in our opinions. When seeking counsel, counsel, counsel otherwise, we waste our time and those of others. Then the next point, which is very important, is listening here. Listening is an art, and one can cultivate the skill of proper listening by remaining quiet. Quiet. In fact, for some people, when they go and ask people, okay, I think I, I want to enroll my child, maybe in like two different schools, or I, I want to get married, and I have like three different people, and then maybe you're, you're okay, what do you think I should do, or how do I do this? And then eventually, they are the ones even counseling the person they want they, w <laughs> they needed counsel from because they will not just listen. Like we like to talk, with and and this is what I believe as as uh, wh what I think as believers we should cultivate the act of listening. You can reserve your questions to the end and just listen because sometimes when we are talking we don't really get to hear even in prayer. That's why it's important while we pray to God while we meditate. It's important that we are quiet to hear what God is saying to us, and we are not just the one doing the talking alone. Amen. The next is curiosity. We must have a strong desire for applicable knowledge to soak in truth and advice as they are being presented to us. We may take notes or record the conversation if permitted. Additionally, we must ask probing questions to make sure we fully understand. In conclusion, we may be free to make our decisions. We are in a free world. You may be free to make your choices. But we are solely responsible for the consequences of our actions. Amen just want us to um, bow down our heads where we are and just ask God that, God, I ask that you give me the grace to make wise decisions going forward. God, I ask that you would help me. I've already learned this morning that decisions I make, I do not just make them, but I'll be responsible for the consequences of my actions. Help me to make decisions that align with your perfect will for my life. Because the decisions I will make will make me eventually in the long run. Help me not to make bad decisions. Help me, oh God, to make you the center of, at the center of my decision. Help me, oh God, to see you in all that I do. And for some of us that we've made very terrible decisions in the past, one of the qualities and the attributes of God is, 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 is a redeemer. He can redeem back the time. And I want us to pray that God, if there's any decision I've made in the past and I'm currently living in the consequences, I ask that you reverse things for me, Lord God, and help me. And if, if there are situations, maybe in situations of marriages that we cannot reverse, ask that God Almighty will give you the strength to cope. He would give you the spirit of wisdom. The spirit, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. Sometimes we go to people, we ask, from, we ask them from, uh, for advice, for what to do, but sometimes it's only us that we really know how how it's doing us now as it's only it's, we are the only ones that know how, how it's been how it's affecting us other people may have similar situations they may have similar experiences but we are alone we are different let's pray that god almighty would help us he would give us the grace that, that he would help us to cope in our op in our different situations in the name of jesus father we ask that you would help us lord in jesus name for in jesus name we've prayed Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's teaching. We thank you for this topic about seeking godly counsel. We ask, oh God, for the rest of our lives, oh God, that you would help us to make decisions, oh God, after your will, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that will not be led by the flesh, but will be led by the Spirit. For your word says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for you've answered our prayers. For in Jesus' name we've prayed.
Amen. Thank you.